Maps are a little bit different in JavaScript. They're really similar looking to objects, but they have some different properties, which I think make them pretty cool. So let's go ahead and cover first what maps are, and then we'll talk about how they are different from objects in JavaScript. So they can be instantiated with a new keyword. You can do something like var my map equals a new map. Uh, and then from there, you can do things like you can console log my map dot size, which will be zero for now. You can add to it with setters. So you can do my map dot set, and then you can pass in something here like foo and a value bar. And then you can do console log my map dot size again, and we should see it's now one. Uh, so let's go ahead and delete this other console log. And then you can retrieve things too. So we could do a console log my map dot get, and then you pass in whatever key it is. Uh, so that should return bar. So that's the basic idea. Uh, they do look probably a lot like objects where you could do something like var my map two equals, and that could be an object literal, right, with foo as a key and bar as its value. Uh, there's a couple of differences here. The first one, which I think is really important, is that objects have prototypes. You know, they come with all sorts of um, methods and keys and things like that that they inherit from deep from object, which inherits from function. Uh, maps don't have any of those. So, for example, uh, if you've ever had to iterate through an object and do the like has own property checks before to make sure that a key actually belongs to the object you're talking about, uh, you'll never have to do that with maps. You can just iterate through them. Uh, also. Uh, objects can only take strings and now with ES6 symbols as their keys. Uh, so for example, um, if you wanted to do something like, let's say, have a key that's a function or something like that, um, and you tried to put in, you know, something like a function, something like that, uh, it's going to error out. So you're not allowed to have um, functions in there, but you can do that with maps. So if we go ahead and delete that, um, we can go ahead over here and set like, um, you know, my map dot set, uh, and then here we can just have, you know, some function that does something, and we can set it to uh, baz or something like that, um, and so that'll work fine. Uh, and you can do that with all sorts of things. So you could also, like, for example, you could just use a primitive number. So you could set uh, 12 to Baz, and then you could go ahead and retrieve 12 here, and it'll print out Baz. So there's a lot more flexibility than objects uh, where you can set your keys to anything. Um, and they don't have all the prototypes that objects have. So they make them a lot simpler to reason about, and you don't have to do any of those checks or anything like that. Um, also, uh, the size, which kind of uh, goes back to the prototype thing. Like, my maps have a dot size, which is great. Um, you are a little bit more out of luck with figuring out your object size, unless you're only targeting really modern browsers where you can do object.keys and pass your object in. Um, but yeah, so those are some of the cool things with maps. I would recommend them for any, you know, really basic iterable, um, especially if you want to use things, other primitives than strings and symbols. Uh, yeah, hope that helps.